Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Wonder Woman from Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This is Wonder Woman from the DC Cinematic Universe, played by Gal Gadot from the Shazam 2 movie. She makes a cameo in that film. I haven't personally seen Shazam 2 yet, but it's on my list of stuff to do in the near future. I ordered this figure from the McFarlane Toy Store, and there was some kind of delay. It took him about seven days to ship this thing. Well, correction, it shipped right away, but about seven days before it actually started moving, and it finally arrived today. This looks to be a big improvement over the previous Gal Gadot Wonder Woman figure, and it looks to be arguably McFarlane's best Wonder Woman to date. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts, McFarlane Toys, ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Shazam, Fear of the Gods, Wonder Woman. Here she is in the package. Looks like she has a removable tiara, two different versions of the Lasso of Truth, a display stand, and a collector's card. One side of the package, Wonder Woman from Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Other side, similar says Wonder Woman. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case it helps anybody. And at the back side, here's a classic drawing of Wonder Woman. So with no further ado, let's open her up. All right, now that this figure out of the package, here she is with all of her accessories laid out. She comes with a display stand, a collector's card, two different versions of the Lasso of Truth, and then a tiara. But before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Wonder Woman from the DC Cinematic Universe, specifically from Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods. She's played by Gal Gadot. Now, before I go any further, I wanna talk about her name. I mispronounced her name in the intro. I said Gal Gadot. Now, her name is spelled G-A-D-O-T, I believe, her last name. And at first glance, you'd think Gal Gadot. But most people look at that, think it's some sort of French name, and say Gal Gadot, which is what I said in the intro. But I remember something being kind of funny about her name. So I did some digging, and it's an Israeli name. It's actually pronounced Gal Gadot. At least that's my American way of pronouncing it. But you do pronounce a T. Only reason I'm saying this is, number one, it's mildly interesting. And number two, I remember when I posted the Wonder Woman video from a few years ago, I had a bunch of people tell me I was pronouncing it wrong when I was actually pronouncing it right, even though I had no idea what I was doing back then. So, let's continue. So Wonder Woman here, she has a cameo in Shazam 2, which I've not seen, but it's the same look from the original Wonder Woman film, Justice League, Batman vs Superman, etc. Now, when that Wonder Woman figure came out, it was in the very early days of the McFarlane DC Multiverse figure, and honestly, it got a lot of hate. I personally really like that figure. People complaining her legs are too long, they look like cheese sticks, etc., etc., etc. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah, paint job could be better. Sure, legs are a little long, a little thin, but I think people kind of blew it out of proportion. Now, this Wonder Woman looks very similar, although it has its issues. So let's take a look. Start with her face here. Now, to me, it does not look like Gal Gadot. I mean, it kind of does, but it's it's like it's too wide. Like the forehead, the cheeks, it's all not thin enough. The lightness is just off to me. It's weird. It's it's sort of there at the same time, but it's like it's sort of distorted. I don't know. It looks just kind of weird. Going further down, sort of a traditional Wonder Woman outfit. It's shiny, almost metallic looking on the red, gold. I think it's a lighter blue down here than the other Wonder Woman. She's got her bracelets on, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. And I'll tell you, the knee knees on mine, not exactly loose, but they're not as tight as most McFarlane figures. And the ankles, eh, borderline loose as well. The boots have the metallic finish to them. She looks good. And I know a lot of people have been wanting an upgraded version of this Wonder Woman. And McFarlane, for whatever reason, will not give us an iconic or a classic Wonder Woman from the comics. Just all these weird versions. So this may very well be McFarlane's best, most traditional Wonder Woman yet. We will see. And just a closer look at her face and head sculpt. I mean, I can see the movie version of Wonder Woman here. I can kind of see Gal Gadot in the eyes, but the overall face, it's just too wide and stretched out. It's, it's hard to explain. It's almost like a funhouse mirror version. Now let's check out her accessories. Let's start with the boring stuff. Here's her display stand. Typical McFarland stand. It's a black perfect circle. It says DC on the bottom. And it's got one peg for the pegs on her feet. Very thin, very basic. 
Not for a collector's card. It's kind of interesting. They use an image of a classic Wonder Woman from the comics. Wonder Woman from Shazam, Fury of the Gods. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. And here's a look at the new Wonder Woman's collector's card. Next to the previous version McFarlane released a few years ago. Now it's like a her tiara. And at first glance, I was kind of like, oh, that's cool. You can display her with the tear on or the tear off. Wrong. She can only be displayed with the tear off. This thing is not intended to actually go on top of her head, as weird as that might sound. Now, I don't think she did it in this movie, but in Wonder Woman 1984, she threw her tiara. And I've seen some websites description of this figure say boomerang tiara or tiara boomerang. Now, it's made of very stretchy material, easy to bend. If you take your Wonder Woman here, the only way you could attach it is to put it on top of her hair, and it is not meant to be that way, obviously. Now, if you really want to put it on her, you'd have to take a knife, cut it to, I don't know, about here, and then you could perhaps glue it onto her forehead. But it seems kind of an odd, eh, miss the mark accessory. Here's Wonder Woman holding and getting ready to throw her tiara. Now let's look at her lasso of truth. She comes with two different variations. One is wound up and can go attached to her side. And the other one is longer, an action version. Here's the wound up version. You can see the sculpting detail, like a rope, golden. And the longer one, this is where she will hold it. And this is where she can catch somebody. And here she is, holstering that lasso. Another set of accessories she could have come with is a sword and shield that she used in Batman vs Superman and Justice League. Here's a set of those I have from the Mattel DC Multiverse Wonder Woman. And here she is, holding those accessories. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and her accessories, I wanted to compare her to the original version of Wonder Woman. This was from 1984 and was in the first few months of McFarland dropping figures. Now, some big differences here, and let's talk about them. Start with their faces here. Now to me, this old one always looked like Shannon Elizabeth from Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. That is just what I see when I look at her. This one here, it kinda looks like Gal Gadot. Kinda doesn't. I mean, Gal Gadot, I guess without the tear on, I don't know, the face just seems too wide. Maybe it's kind of used to this one being so thin. Which one has the better head? It almost feels like if you put both of them together, mixed them, got the best of both, it still wouldn't be right. Anyway, going further down. Outfit's very similar. I feel like it is a new sculpt. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I guess it's not. It just kind of looks like it's a little bit bigger on the new one. Paint job, a different skin tone, but it does look like the arms and torso are the same. Different head, going further down, of course, it's going to be the same type of skirt thing. The legs are definitely different, a lot more muscular, thicker toned on this one, and that was always a big complaint about the old one. I saw so many people say they look like cheese sticks. Now, the entire leg appears to be different. Bottom part, top part. Feet might be the same. So, same figure, paint job, maybe a little better. Different head, different legs. That's about it. It's the same lasso accessory, too. Added the tiara. And actually took away the tiara on the figure, which I think was a really poor choice. I prefer it with the tiara on. So, I know a lot of people are going to be gluing that thing on there. But it's so weird to include a removable tiara that is not intended to actually be worn. Now let's check out her height, from bottom to the top of her head. She's standing at about 7.25 inches tall, which could translate to about 18 and a half centimeters. She's going to be on the bigger end of McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Now let's check out her articulation, starting with her head here, of course. Can rotate from side to side. The hair can get over her shoulders, go all the way around if you want. She can look down, can't really look up. The hair in the back is going to obstruct that. Can tilt her head, eh, barely. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out about 90 degrees. Surprised it doesn't go more than that. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. She's got butterfly joint between her shoulder and chest area. Increase in range of motion and cover up that large gap. Bicep cut below that. 
double jointed elbows that go all the way in. Look pretty awkward like this though. Her wrists, older style ball joints. The sculpt goes back a good three years with McFarland Toys. They've made a ton of improvements since then. Rotate and hinge as well. Ball joint or torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one in her waist, rotate around, forward and back. Giving her pretty wide range of motion in her torso area. A lot looser in her torso than her waist on mine. Legs completely does the splits, not a ball joint. McFarland style hip joints. Skirt kind of went up there. Let's push that thing down so it doesn't look so weird. They go forward about that far. Back, not much. There's a little bit of rotation there. Not too much, but a little bit. Double jointed knees go back about that far. And her ankles forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and she has torque articulation. Here's a look at Wonder Woman in front of Superman and Batman. This is a scene from Batman vs Superman when she saved Batman's ass and they finally teamed up to fight Doomsday. Man, McFarlane has got to release at Batfleck in the regular suit. Here's an image of Wonder Woman in a Themyscira type setting, back at home with the other Amazons. Here's an image of Wonder Woman and Shazam just standing there. They're both just standing there because McFarlane never released a villain from either one of their films, so they have no one to fight against. Now stick around, next to some other action figures. Starting off with some of their Wonder Woman figures. Here she is, next to the previous 1984 version of Wonder Woman. I guess a new one's better, but it has more or less all the same flaws, minus the legs. I honestly am not sure which one I would pick as a better figure. I guess the new one, but I still think the previous one is going to be my main default Wonder Woman in the McFarland DC Multiverse line. And here she is. Next to the Armored Wonder Woman from 1984. Here are all three versions of McFarlane's Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. Here she is, next to McFarlane's Batman The Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman. Then, next to the Death Metal Wonder Woman. Here she is, next to the Todd McFarlane designed Wonder Woman. Then, next to the Justice League Endless Winter Wonder Woman. Here are all of the McFarlane DC Multiverse Wonder Woman figures McFarlane has made so far. Almost every single one has a variant. Now, I do not know why, but McFarlane will not release a regular Wonder Woman, whether it be a classic one from the 50s or the 70s, or at least a modern iconic one, New 52, Rebirth, animated, something normal. Hopefully, when it comes, it'll be awesome. We'll see. Seems like it's never going to happen at this point. She is arguably the third most popular DC character out there. Give us a normal comic version. And here she is, next to my DC Direct Wonder Woman figures. Then, next to a Noble Toys Bendy figure Wonder Woman. And now, next to all of my Mattel Wonder Woman figures. Here are all of my different 6 and 7 inch scale Wonder Woman figures. Now let's take around, next to some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here are all the McFarland Wonder Woman figures they've made. Now let's take around, Next to some other McFarlane DC Cinematic Universe live action action figures. We'll start off with the most recent films and work our way backward. Here she is, next to Shazam from Shazam Fury of the Gods. Those are the only two figures they're going to make from this film, it looks like. Now, the next film they're going to make figures from is The Flash. Some people are already finding those figures at Target. That is awesome. Can't wait to get mine. And after that, we know they're going to do figures from Aquaman 2. Before that, they made a full wave of figures from Black Adam. Here are McFarlane's figures from The Suicide Squad. And before that was Wonder Woman 1984. Here are the figures from that film. And before that, they made Zack Snyder's Justice League. And they'd never made a Wonder Woman for this film because the 1984 figure came out around the same time. This figure fits in pretty good with that collection. And here she is, next to Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey. Now it's around, next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here she is, next to the Arkham City Riddler and the Arkham Knight Earth 2 Batman. Then, next to the two most recent mega figures, Calabac and Fulcum Abominus. And here she is, next to the fourth wave of Page Punchers. This is an Aquaman themed wave. Aquaman, Aqualad, Black Manta, and Ocean Master. Here's this new Wonder Woman, next to the Walmart exclusive Gold Legal Beast Boy. I'm still unable to track down the Vampire Joker. If anybody has a hook on him, let me know. Then, 
Next is McFarland Toy Story exclusive, Kyle Rayner Blue Lantern. And now, next is the Dark Knight Trilogy wave, Collective Build Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. Here's Wonder Woman. Next is the Dark Knight's Metal Gladiator Batman and the Kingdom Come Armored Batman. And here she is. Next to Duke Thomas the Signal, Con L Superboy, and both versions of the Jake Garrick Flash. Then, next to the most recent Batman wave, we have the Hush Batman, both versions of the Nightfall Catwoman, both versions of Mr. Freeze, and the Infinite Frontier Joker. And now, next to Walmart exclusive, Gold Label Vampire Batman and Eradicator. Here's this Wonder Woman. Next to the Target exclusive, Gold Label Dead Man and Flashpoint Aquaman. And here she is. Next to the Shazam 2 Movie Shazam and the Amazon exclusive Tim Drake Robin. Then, next to the Amazon exclusive Batman Family 5 Pack. And now, with some more McFarlane gaming figures, we have the Arkham City Sick Joker and the Arkham Knight Scarecrow and Red Hood. Here she is, next to McFarlane's more coming 11 DC offerings, the Batman Who Laughs, and both versions of Joker. And finally, next to the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive Hush Superman and Rebirth Kid Flash. Now, let's check her out. Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how she fits in both scale and style wise in case you know which lines you can mix her with. Since she's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check her out with some of her McFarland toys, brothers and sisters. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, next is some more McFarland toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. Here she is, next to one of my wife's house plants. And here she is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here she is, standing with some NECA figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares, AEW wrestlers. And here she is, next to some Mezco. 112 collected figures, then next to some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures, and here she is, next to some Mafex figures, then next to some Hasbro, Marvel Legends, and here she is, next to some SH figure art section figures, and finally, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, she's a nice figure, but I'm still full of disappointment. Now, I don't know what's up with McFarlane and not releasing any traditional looking Wonder Woman figures, but this is about the closest we've gotten so far. Now, I don't know if I like her better or worse than the previous release. Here are the things I don't like. Her face sculpt doesn't scream Gal Gadot to me. It just looks a little bit different. We went back in time three years, the articulation. We have those hideous ball joints in the wrists. Her knees and ankles are pretty loose on mine. The tear thing is just a joke. Why would they make it like that? And the fact that she's pretty much 85% reuse. Now, things I like better. The legs. Legs look considerably better. They're thicker, more muscle definition to them. Her accessories are pretty cool. I definitely like the different lassos, etc. The Tira is a joke. Her articulation, it's improved over the last one. She's got some thigh swivel. Sculpt and paint shop are pretty good, although the face does not impress me. If I to rate this figure, I'm going to give her a disappointing 6 out of 10. I was really hoping she'd be a knock out of the park and I'd give her an 8 out of 10. I don't know, just a lot of things bother me about this figure. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.